Hello, I'm Joel Rennick, Consulting Engineering Manager at Apple, and I'm going to show you some of the technologies in Mac OS X Server and how your organization can implement them. Let's begin by taking a look at directory services and open directory in Mac OS X Server. Here we are in Server Admin. This is the application that you'll use to manage all of your server functionality. Adding and removing services, turning things on and off, all of that's done through this application. In this case, we're looking at the open directory section within Server Admin. Open Directory is a combination of three different technologies. The LDAP server for giving out user records, the password server, which is Apple developed and stores password in a secure and encrypted format, and Kerberos, which allows for single sign-on. So within the Open Directory section here, you'll be able to look at logs, uh, you'd archive all your information off if you wanted to, and you can go to settings. In this case, we're right now running as a standalone server. This means that we don't have a directory service actually running. We just have the local directory service like any Mac OS X system has. What we're going to do now is promote this. So we click on the Change button. We now get an assistant that comes up and allows us to pick the new type of open directory system that we're going to have. There's three different options. One is the master, which is the first and the primary server in an open directory domain. Another one is a replica. You can have an almost unlimited number of replicas that can take your user information and spread them out across other servers for redundancy and for load balancing. Also, you can be connected to a directory server. So this is if you wanted to get your information from another open directory system. In this case, we're the first server out here on my network, so I'm going to create an open directory master. All I have to do is click Continue. It's going to ask me to create a new admin user. This is going to be my directory admin. It's going to be able to manage all of the LDAP, Kerberos, and password server functionality. Type in a new password. Hit continue. Now I have an option uh, to change the name of my Kerberos realm or my search base. Both of these got picked up from DNS. They look good. I don't need to do anything. And now the system's going to go ahead and create all of this. As this is working, it's building up an entirely uh, new LDAP database. So from scratch, we're going to be able to put our users into that. It's then creating a Kerberos Realm that provides single sign-on services for us. This allows you to log into your machine and then go to file sharing without having to type in your password again. And then the password server, again, that encrypted way of, of saving passwords. It's finished. Our role has now changed to an open directory master. And we now can see if we had any replicas, they'd be here uh, that we'd be replicating to. Under LDAP, we can see where the database is actually being stored, uh, some other specifics about this. And we now have a policy tab. This allows us to set some very uh, granular controls over user passwords. For example, we can say that uh, if a user has been inactive for more than 60 days, we're going to block that user from logging in and make an admin go out and make sure that that user is actually valid still before they can log in again. So now that we've got Open Directory set up, we can actually go to another application. And this is in your Applications folder, Server. There's going to be a Server folder once you've installed the Server Applications. And Workgroup Manager. Workgroup Manager allows you to manage all the users and groups. So here we're going to type in the name of our server, just server.example.com. Now we have a view into the LDAP directory. And we can see that we're in the LDAP directory because of this menu item up there. So here's our directory administrator. That's the first user that's created. We're going to authenticate as that user. The lock is now unlocked, and I can add a new user into this. In this case, Sandra Brooks. Type in a password. Uh, Sandra cannot administer this server, but she can access the account. We'll hit Save. Some options that I have in here. Uh, I can determine what groups she might be a member of, where her home directory might live, specific information, phone number, email, to be able to use the directory application in OS X, to actually use that as kind of a phone book. That can all be done through Worker Manager as well. I want to actually create more of a managed environment for this user. We do a lot of work in this organization that I'm a member of. I want to make sure that Sandra only has access to specific things. So I can now go to the Preferences option here in Workgroup Manager. And I'm going to go down to Applications. 
And now I can actually list what applications are available to her or not. If I click on the Always box, I can now hit Plus, and I can say that she can use Chess, and perhaps Safari. Other applications are going to be denied to her. So if she were to log in, these are the only applications that she could launch. This is a very easy and simple way for administrators to utilize Open Directory to manage their environment so nothing that you don't want to have happen is going on. I'll hit Apply now. And now I've got a brand new user in Open Directory. That user's been managed. Only certain applications can be launched. Uh, I can set up a password policy for Sandra just by going back to Accounts and going into Advanced. I can now go into Options here, and I can make sure that when she changes her password, it contains at least seven characters and must be reset every 90 days. So all of this is available through Open Directory. Again, a combination of a couple of technologies that allows you to have a centralized user database that's easily manageable by administrators on your network.